<laughs> yeah, so then after that, then we're just going to take a few pictures and you say the drop. What's the drop? Uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, instead of the whole, like, uh, smoke a Dutch thing, can I just say stay tuned, stay glued, smoke wood? Because I smoke backwards. Um, to be honest, I don't think, I, I mean, you should ask Tony. <laughs> I told you, nigga, I told you! What up, scholars? This is the speech guy, Tony Asar, A-S-A-R, and you know I'm with the super duper. <laughs> I can't even stop it when he just comes in with it. Uber producer. I forgot the professor. Okay, okay. Podcast Poppy! Self-titled. Oh, fierce. Hell yeah. Thank you for that. You are, man. <laughs> I feel special every time. <laughs> it brightens my week every time. Because, man, I always appreciate the work you do behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. You know it's all me. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I'll let y'all guess. <laughs> but, Earl, baby, how you been, man? How you been? I've been pretty good, man. Week wasn't too bad. You know, um, I had a dream. My hairline came back. <laughs> that was great. And, like, I was a 10 in my dream. That's the only thing stopping me from being a bona fide 10. Oh, just it's, the hairline? It's the hairline. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it came back. It was great. Hey, <laughs> if, if you had your hair, would you have a taper or a fade? I would have dreads like you niggas, <laughs> just so I can shake my shit. Because right now, I'll be in the club, and I can't shake nothing but dandruff. <laughs> shit. shit sucks. And my hat come off and shit. Ugh. But yeah, week wasn't too bad. I found out, like, okay, you know how you over, I'm over 30, you over 30. Yeah. Certain moments that happen where we're like, shit, I'm getting older. Yeah. And I was at work the other day, mm -hmm. and I farted. <laughs> <laughs> I farted, nigga, and I was like, ooh, that... I should tend to that. <laughs> like, I should really tend to that, but I didn't. <laughs> About three hours went by. I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I, I realized I'm getting older because I'm going to the bathroom, making bathroom trips just to wipe the cake out my ass. <laughs> like, not to take a piss or to take a shit, but just to make sure I'm cleaning up all there. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Cheeks with extra icing. Yeah. <laughs> not a good look. Not a good feel when you're moving around all the time and you just over. Yeah, not a good look. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> so that's my week. I'm realizing I'm getting older. <laughs> Ever so slowly. <laughs> How was your week, man? Week's pretty good, man. Uh, paid the registration for my car. So Ooh, I'm mobile. In, I'm mobile. Ooh, mobile. Driving. And shout out to the L.A. comedy scene because hey, I'm back, bitches. Ooh, y'all better watch the fuck out. Ooh. Tony is about to show his face every day. You every day. Now. Put all that pressure on him right now. Every day. I'm just saying, I did all that damage <laughs> on a bus. I'm going to fuck him up with a car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fuck him up, baby. You going to miss that bus, though, aren't you? Uh, which part? The smelly bums or the pissy bums? Oh, am I supposed to say homeless? Homeless. A mixture of both. <laughs> it's Bumless. a smell It's a smell you're gonna miss it's, it's, Yeah You know Cause it, I have never Smelled anything <laughs> like it before Or anywhere else On this planet Unique smell man you, you can only get those In certain places And it's like They clean it But somehow The funk Overpowers the ammonia Yeah Yeah I, I've never seen that before. Yeah I've definitely Gone in there With, with the with the whole shirt thing Just walking yeah. Like what's up y'all <laughs> Or some nights When I'm just tired I'm like this what it is Alright this what it is <laughs> <laughs> Breathe it through my mouth the whole time. <laughs> I probably got funk stuck up in between my teeth. Ugh. It looks like a cavity, but no, it's just funk. Mm. <laughs> wasn't gonna say anything earlier, but I, that's why I was bringing up Jolly Ranchers. So it was like, nigga, <laughs> Jolly, that I got no gum. Bit. I got some Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> Jk, Jk. But that ain't about that, man. It's not about us, yo. It's about who we got in the noise lab. And this right here, man, is the skinniest man this side of the IE. Fresh from Alaska? Yeah. Shh, we're going to have to talk about that because I need to learn some more about that. Indubitably. Fuck yeah. And also, I, I dug this guy for the past two years. You know, the the first time uh, meeting him, to my memory, uh, was at a show. And he came out like a wrestler. 
Oh, shit. And it was very entertaining. <laughs> and I was tuned in for the rest of his set. I was like, yeah, I fucked with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It was okay. like, we're going to have a TLC right now? Okay. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. But also, this guy's energy is just always genuine, always chill. And I, I just had for sure. had to make sure he stopped through the noise lab, you know, being part of the Pomona community and art scene. But without further ado, tell the people what your name is. Yo, my name is June, a.k.a. Skinny Black. I'm an MC, a producer, percussionist, and I'm from Anchorage, Alaska, uh, by way of Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been in California for like... Ten years now though, so I feel like I I, I think I'm a Californian. No, yeah, it takes yeah, about yeah, that. Pretty sure yeah. it takes that. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't finished the paperwork and all that, but like, uh, I I think I'm a Californian. Yeah, legally you <laughs> you're, you're like legally married to California. Yeah, right? yeah. it takes ten years over as a marriage. Plus year. the amount of medicinal I see around <laughs> your <laughs> peripheral. Yeah, <laughs> you you are definitely a Californian. In that case, I've been in California for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been in California before I moved to Cali. Yeah. Shit. Now, I, I just want I had to I got I got to ask, no, no. I gotta ask you, you. What is coming out like a wrestler? What what happened? Was it was it the the rock or the stone cold? Like what do you mean coming out like a wrestler? What happened? No, he had these dope ass boots on. Mhm. He had a ladder? Was it was Oh it? shit. I had a chair. A chair. Yeah. Yeah. Who in the smack with that? Uh, she, yo, whoever was in the way. <laughs> but, okay. But the way he came in was like, you know, like just like you know that old school WWE. Yeah, like, I was missing. It was like, oh, this nigga got theme music. And, was, I and think, he came in like, dude, dude, dude. I was oh, like, all right. Those are the Coors Light days too. So I was on my my Stone Cold shit. And I was, was smashing like, the yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was electrifying. And then rap after. Yeah, and, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then rap after. I was like, now all right. that I have your attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's that hard. Did, That's yeah. Dope. It was That's cool. Dope. I gotta bring that back. And honestly, I personally haven't seen an intro like that since. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I gotta, uh, that's a hard one to bite. You gotta have a. You gotta have the energy, especially yeah. around this area. Yeah. Like, if anybody else did, I'm like, you got that from June. <laughs> uh, you gotta have like everything set up beforehand. So like you know, when it's your time, they're not. Everybody's not looking for you. It's mm-hmm. just play the music. When, once you cue my intro music, I know that I'm supposed to be walking towards the stage. Mm-hmm. You know, Ooh. so you gotta set that shit up beforehand and all that. There's a lot of coordination, but. If it's done the right way, you know, it's memorable. Very. <laughs> and go back, rewind, <laughs> and catch that gem on how to stage your performance. I'm just saying. Mm. Yeah, man. I'm mm. just saying. That's what it's, I heard. Uh, at the end of the day, man, like, we all got stories to tell, but it's entertainment. Like, mm-hmm. People are coming to forget about their problems or just mm-hmm. to let loose or to maybe learn something new, maybe to, to um, I don't know, just, yeah, just basically learn something new. So... It's bigger than just just coming up there and rapping. Like you know, Facts. you got to put on a show. Mm-hmm. And like, what better way? What better way to put on a show than with like one of rapping's close cousins, which is wrestling. Facts. You know what I'm like, Facts. you go like any rapper, you know, has at some point in their life has had some kind of connection with wrestling, whether it was like playing WrestleMania on sixty four, actually watching the shit, mm-hmm. yeah. or maybe having the opportunity to go to an actual like WWF match. WWE or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Or dragging the mattress out your room and yeah. putting it in the Yes, room. definitely that many memories. We all did that. We all did that. Many memories. Definitely all did that. If you did none of the things I said before, you definitely <laughs> body slammed your little brother on the mattress. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Why Why is it such a true statement? Almost every rapper or music artist, mostly rapper that we talk to, they really into WWE or know a lot about it. Or It shoots already in the mainstream. I mean, even Snoop was a big part of mm-hmm. WWF and the WWE. Mm-hmm. I remember him coming out and and do a little pimp. Like, he, 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 like, was slapping yeah, people he, with, <laughs> with little skinny arms uh, on. <laughs> He's 300 pounds, yeah. The white beard, like, soaking wet, weighing 110 pounds. <laughs> He's like, this hit right here? <laughs> 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 God, 300 pounds all muscle just knocked him off. Like, all his weight is in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> They need to bring celebrity death matches to outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I would love to see Snoop and Gail go at it. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be hard. All right, my favorite part of all that was was when he was like, 
I'm gonna call it one. Can I call it one, y'all? Is that all right with you? <laughs> I was like, oh, you're so considerate, Mr. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> you're so considerate. Hanging with Martha Stewart showed you some things. <laughs> she was like, I'm gonna ask before I call you it. I think if anybody can identify a bitch, it's going to be Snoop Dogg. Huh? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> he was there with Pac when Pac was, I didn't wonder why I call you bitch. I didn't wonder why I call you bitch. He was right there with that nigga. You know what I'm saying? That was death row. <laughs> but not to sidetrack and to hop back, uh, June. So, Anchorage, Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska. All right, first, what was it like being there? And then how does one... Like, literally come from Anchorage, Alaska, and end up in Pomona. <laughs> um, Anchorage is cool, man. It's like a, it's a city like any other city. Like, you have your, even though it's all the way in Alaska, like, you have your good parts and you have your bad parts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the misconception is like, oh, there's no black people out there. Like, it's just natives or it's just white people. But that ain't true. Like, uh, I feel like Alaska, as far as... um. When I first moved to California, I was in, like, Central California. So it was basically, like, Mexican, black, white. Yeah. And um, I feel like Anchorage was, like, more... I was already prepared for California because Anchorage was so culturally diverse. Mm-hmm. Like, you had, like, every kind of Asian, like, every kind of Pacific Islander, like, every kind of Latino, like, mm-hmm. black people from America, Africans, like, people from all over the place, like, people from Europe, Russians, like, all, like... Everywhere, so is I think it was cool. Like coming up there, kind of made me um, who I am. Uh, just, just the diversity, like just mm-hmm. being up, like growing up, having some of my best friends be from Guam and like going and kicking it at their house, or having some of my best friends be straight out of Panama and go and kick it with them and like stay with them for dinner, see how their family does shit. Like mm-hmm. it's, it was like you know definitely like a a, a learning experience growing up, just being able to to grow up in that like that much of a diverse like community Mm -hmm. and i I think i moved i was born in dc um and my parents split up and i wound up we wound me and my mom wound up in kansas and that's where she met my stepdad who was um he was a retired air force at the time Mm. and he had been stationed up in anchorage they had been dating uh they got married and he reckoned well he like came up with the idea like let's move to alaska Mm -hmm. and she was with it so i was uh you know i was like three or four you got no say at that time yeah yeah yeah, that's what it was 94 to 1994 to 2017 man was anchorage alaska bro wow very recent that's a yeah like I grew, that was you know that's my home. Is that's that is it, is that why you got the thick dreads? It was like let me keep myself <laughs> warm <laughs> out there. The dreads didn't come till uh, California, but wow, really? Yeah, yeah. 2017, 220. That's three years of growth. Yeah. No, 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 oh, no. I no, just no, admire. No, no, no. My bad. I said 2017. I meant 2007. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I was 17 <laughs> in 2007. That's okay. What I said oh, okay. 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 My bad. Yeah. I had to clear that up. Yeah. This is 10 years. I wish my hair grew that fast. Yeah, I was about to that say that's a record, <laughs> right? Yeah. Beeswax and cocoa that butter. That would be sick as fuck. <laughs> I could auction that shit up. Like, huh. You throw it back real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start a business. <laughs> Are they really paying people in Alaska to live in Alaska? Yes, sir. That is a thing that's been going on since way before cats like me. Um, I don't know exactly when the dividends started. Maybe like. I don't know, fifties or sixties, something like. That. Basically, shortly after Alaska was purchased mm-hmm. and became the forty ninth state, um, basically the government was paying the citizens of Alaska because they that's where a lot of the U S. oil comes from, mm-hmm. is Alaska. So they're essentially just paying us for using our oil. Yeah, and it's it's every citizen. So you get like, um, say Tony moves to Alaska with his girl or something. Mm-hmm. If you got a girl, um, Shaniqua, she he moves up there with his girl Shaniqua, mm-hmm. and then they have seventeen kids. Guy, like, damn Tony, that's, slow down. That's, yeah, slow down, Tony. <laughs> but hey, maybe not slow down because that's a check for you, Shaniqua, and seventeen checks for each of those kids. Once wow, shit! As soon yeah. as they're born, yeah. Like once you're born in Alaska, you're a citizen. If I, I, I mean, I might be incorrect. It might be when you turn two, because I know like. For like a California to move to Alaska and then reap the benefits of the dividend, you have to be a citizen, which means 
and you got to live there for like at least two years before mm. you become a citizen. Okay. So, or it might be a year, but basically you got to go there and live. And once mm. you're there and you're you're an official citizen, yeah, you start getting a check every, I think it's November. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's like, I've seen it as low as, seen it as low as 1300 and as high as like 2700 Wow. And like, that's like another reason why like I, I just feel like, um, I got such a good education, not just like from the school system, but you know they say the best type of education is travel. Mm-hmm. The best Facts. best form of educa- education is traveling. Facts. Mm-hmm. You know, get out and see the world. Like get outside your neighborhood, get outside your city, whatever. But like the the whole fact that we had the dividend shit going, like of course you know we was kids, so my parents are not gonna give me a check for two thousand dollars. Yeah, know? yeah. So they they might give us a couple hundred. But then they pull the rest of the money together and we do like family vacations. So mm-hmm. like I was like I know niggas like just like you know niggas in LA that have never left their city. Like, I know niggas in Anchorage who never left Anchorage. Like <laughs> born and raised in Anchorage, don't know nothing else but Alaska. Yeah. Like so uh we I got humbled like at a very young age and just was like blessed, like to be able to like but ble- yeah, experience that because you know, not everybody's parents was doing the same mm-hmm. shit with the money. Yeah. You know? Like so like I got, you know, I got that experience getting able to travel and come to California, like, mm-hmm. before I lived here and, like, get to experience, like, the garment district. Like, that was the shit. And, like, every year we go to L.A. <laughs> and niggas go school shopping because mm-hmm. it's, like, I come with this shit that niggas ain't never seen before. Like, huh. Huh. Only, there's only so many. I mean, there's a few malls in Anchorage, but... It's like it, it gets pretty repetitive. Like everybody, you're probably the same going shit. back at skin glowing because the sun's out yeah, more yeah, and yeah. shit. Like, <laughs> Came in and shining. Why is this nigga looking so illustrious? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So what was the music culture like in Alaska? Man, it's crazy. Well, Anchorage. Like Anchorage has a pretty strong hip hop scene. Okay. Been around like niggas been doing it since. At least the early '80s, there's been a lot of cat. Like I mean, black people in general, like we've been up there for a long time. So it's like, um, niggas been involved in the culture, involved in like what's going on out there, and it's kind of just came from um, just niggas. It's really just people like just move from California or move from down south. Like, either to, to pursue, like, getting a dividend mm-hmm. or just to, like, pursue, like, a better job, a better life. It's, like, the cost of living ain't too high out there. Or escape that trial. You, or escape that trial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that I, I wasn't trying to put nobody on black. But, no, I know there's some cold cases in Alaska for yeah, sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> pun, pun intended. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but basically what I'm trying to say is, like, like niggas been up there thugging for a while. Like, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I feel like the, the music... Or the the culture, like begat the music, mm-hmm. like you know, like with with the drug dealers and shit and people like that, like coming up into anchors either to just push some shit and dip or push some shit and stay, like like the music came with it, and I feel like I don't know, uh, Alaska, we it's it's definitely the West Coast. Like I've always said, like. Alaska's the West Coast because it's even further west than California. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm That's saying? a good point. That shit's hanging out there, <laughs> yeah. you know. So, like, the, and you see that influence in the music and the culture. Like, there's a, you know, like just the the whole like West Coast vibe is really prevalent in Alaska. But at the same time, like, you have a lot of people from the South, and the, the Southern like vibe is is like heavy too. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people from Louisiana, a lot of people from Texas. A lot of people from the Midwest as well. Like I have homies from Chicago, and like all that goes to say is just like all the all those things had like an effect on like the the music scene in, in Anchorage, mm-hmm. and like you had cats. Like I don't know if y'all remember BT and Cut. Oh Kicking come on, did we remember? Kicking, do you remember? Okay, oh, do you remember? I remember? Do you remember uh, Joker the Bell Bondsman? Uh-uh. Joker the Bell Bondsman was known uh-uh. as like the king of BT Uncut. And you know where he's from? Anchorage, Alaska. Oh. Did he have that song with TNA? Damn. I think so. Is it, a, was he the one with the song TNA? I believe it's so. It's big. Yeah. And your ass is fat. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's no, Joker. he was always on BET Uncut. Yeah, that's Joker. Uh huh. Hey. The king. He's still to this day. Like, to this day. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 short pause. Like, I swear to God. 
in, until that nigga said that, I never said to this day so many times in my life. Like till that day, till that day, <laughs> till like, that day. A fucking coincidence. But um, yeah, Joker the Bells Bondsman is like the OG out there because he's the he was like the first one to do it big. He's the first nigga to like really rep Alaska like on mm-hmm. a large scale, like mm-hmm. a platform like BT Uncut, mm-hmm. and like that that shit was really cool for us. Like coming up as a kid, like he had this song about. Like Alaska, and he's basically just shouting out all the neighborhoods mm-hmm. and like the the radio station up there at the time. I think it's still around. It was ninety two point nine KFAT, and like, is if you could get your shit on KFAT, you know, you was doing something in Alaska. Yeah. So like, that was a cool thing. But yeah, man, it's the 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 music scene out there is is pretty much just like any other city. Like you know, minus the fact that it's Alaska. You know, it's all kinds of different sub genres in top inside of scenes you know there's a pretty strong like punk scene mm-hmm. in alaska there's a um there's like a you know there's a the the rock scene or alternative rock scene like is you know dominated by the fucking portugal the man they mm-hmm. from anchorage you know like yeah john that's the homie um they from wasilla i'm from 20 minutes down the road but yeah, it's just it's just cool to see how everything's been developing. Like people are finally starting to get their like their due. Like I mean, like cats like Joker the Bells Bond's been have been around forever, but like a lot of people don't know who mm-hmm. he is, you know, mm-hmm. unless you like dig it out of them, mm-hmm. you know. So um, it's cool to see like how things have, have have been evolving over the years. Like when I was first getting into music, um, and anchors was like, I think I was I started writing in like two thousand and two. So I was like 12 when I started writing. Mm-hmm. And like, the, I don't think that, that Joker the Bell Bondsman song hadn't been out yet. And before then, I feel like it wasn't cool to be from Alaska. Like, mm-hmm. It was always like, <clears throat> if you was born in Alaska, niggas was on your head. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I can every, tell you growing up, like, yeah. I thought nobody lived out there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when I grew that up, like, yeah, yeah. Like, they never talked about living like, with people out there. Yeah, and it was like, for a long time, everybody only represented, like, where they came from. Mm-hmm. Like, for the longest time, me, uh, being a kid, even though I was only in D.C. for four years of my life, like, I'll claim D.C. before I claim Anchorage. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that was, I mean, I was a kid still, and he wasn't really active, um, but... Like, it's just cool to see, like, how things have changed. Like, people, like, it don't really matter where you're from nowadays. Like, that part. everybody it is. And it's, like, the person who's from, like, the podunk town. Like, no disrespect. But it's, like, the, that's the person who's, like, popping right now. Because you rep your city, you know. It's, like, once you got your city on your back, then, you know, you get your county on your back. Once you got the county on mm-hmm. your back, you got a few counties. And it's just, you keep yeah. bubbling over and bubbling yeah. over. And you got a whole state. Once you got a state, you know, surrounding states want to know what's going on. And now you're regionally famous. Mm-hmm. You go from regional to national, and national to international. It's just, you know, one brick at a time, just building that shit. And it's cool to just see the, like, to be to have been around for the building of the bricks. Like, I know, like, every, all my, and my little brother and all his friends, like, all the young niggas I knew in Anchorage, like, they all repped the shit out of Alaska. They call it Rage City. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, them niggas rep the shit out, and it's just it's a beautiful thing to see like um, how the music's developed. Like people kind of trying to develop like a, a whole sound, cause you know, West Coast got a sound. Well, mm-hmm. used, West Coast used to have <coughs> that G funk sound. sound, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. East Coast used to have a sound. The South had its own sound, so I always like wanted to be one of the cats who brought forth a like a North sound. Like, mm-hmm. What is the North sound like? And shit. It's like. Teeth chatter. Rage, nigga, rage. Uh, uh, rage, city, nigga. Uh, 907. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess the question was like. All right, so that was the that, lifestyle. Yeah, it was like a long winded version. No, so that was the lifestyle in Anchorage, Alaska. So then, what? how did you end up in Pomona? Okay, um, I left. Anchorage in 2007 and moved to Porterville, California. That's where my dad was living at the time. That's the 559 area. Like, Fre- like south of Fresno and north of Bakersfield. And we were out there for a minute. I think I, I uh, finished my junior year of high school and was a senior. And basically fucked up, did some shit, got kicked out of school. 
um, and how to do the little day school thing. So I'm in there with all the niggas that are like borderline, like juvenile hall and shit, mm -hmm. or, or like fresh out of juvenile hall, mm -hmm. trying to get reintroduced back into the school system. And I just basically just focused and got ahead, got ahead of like where I was supposed to be and just graduated early and wound up moving to, my pops got a job offer in Ventura. And okay. we uh, we moved out to the Ventura area and I started uh, going to Ventura Community College. Mm -hmm. Went there, I uh, majored in music. I got my, I got two A's. I got my A in music and then I got my A in, uh, or I'm sorry, I got an AA, and then I got with an emphasis in um, human human art studies or something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, basically, like once I once I graduated from Ventura College, I transferred to Cal Poly Pomona, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like I, when I first when I was going to Cal Poly, I lived in Upland because like I got family from out this way, like Upland and, and uh, Riverside and whatnot. And they were all, like, telling me before I moved out here, like, yo, I know you're going to Cal Poly, but don't get a house in Pomona. <laughs> <laughs> don't get a house in Pomona. Uh, I understand like, that. Yeah. yeah like, I get it now. I didn't get it then, but I get it now. And, like, so, yeah, I was in Upland. I was in Upland off a of mountain in Foothill for a while. And it's funny, like, yeah, after I graduated from Pomona is when I actually moved to Pomona. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, I think like uh, I lived off of White, White and Rebecca. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was like 2015 to 2017, and then since 2017, well, yeah, since like the end of 2017, I've been at the Dope Spot. Okay. Which is right up the street. Shout out to Dope Spot. I, I, Shout out to the historical dope spot. I like to put that to it just because. The historical, yeah. Just because, man, all the artists that I've seen pass through there and then seeing where they're at now, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. if, if you was there from day one to seeing it now, you'd be like, yeah. oh, this house produces yeah, musicians. Man. It's a dope thing, man. Like, uh, <laughs> it's a dope thing. <laughs> nah. uh, pun intended. <laughs> pun intended. That's, that's, the, that's the fucking the phrase of the day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Like, I was a member of the band. Well, I still am. The Dope by Design, Tyrone, LT the Rapper, his band. Mm -hmm. And originally, like, the Dope Spot started, like, it wasn't, it was just, you know, Tyrone lived there. And there was that garage in the back. Mm -hmm. No carpet. It was just like a, it was a detached garage. Mm -hmm. You park cars in that shit or storage or whatever. And that was our, like, rehearsal space, like, for the beginning years. This is, like, 2013. And niggas just, like, started like brainstorming like like why don't we come up with like our own studio or what whatnot like why don't we have a place where we can record where we can rehearse and blah blah, blah. like it was originally for us mm -hmm. and then once we got everything together and like started to see like what kind of impact we could have on the community if we like opened it to just more than just being something for the band mm -hmm. like we went we went ahead and did that and then you know, here we are, what, almost seven years later. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> things have changed so much, bro. Like, I remember, like, it was literally just the shittiest garage. Like, <laughs> not, even, not even the drywall, just the straight studs. Tough. The yeah. The studs. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, like, you guys have seen it now. Like, it's, it's night and day, it's, like, what it yeah. used to look like. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really dope to see the, the growth. The growth. Yeah. yeah. And definitely a, a, a cornerstone, if not a pillar. In this Pomona arts community. Oh yeah, I definitely feel like it, and it's dope because I feel like it's all like come full circle. Because you know, LT his pops is like OG pop locker, like uh, mm. uh, Daryl Stokes. Mm -hmm. Daryl Stokes is one of the original pop lockers. Like you know, Pomona pop locker started in Pomona. And oh, this okay. nigga was one of like the originals. Like you know, West Coast had pop locker, mm -hmm. East Coast had breakdance. Mm -hmm. You know, people started traveling and shit kind of started intermingling, but mm -hmm. pop pop lock has started on the West Coast as far as I as far as I know. And I know that their dad, uh, Tyrone and all his brothers and sisters, their pops, like, is the uh, OG. Like Pomona OG, like fucking pop locking and all that shit brought that shit to the forefront. And it's crazy, like yeah, this motherfucker's like close with niggas like the crazy legs and like all these mm -hmm. OG mm -hmm. like dancers and shit, like and, they they talk of like Tyrone and them talk. They call these people uncle, you know, mm -hmm. like Uncle Crazy Legs, Uncle So and So. Mm -hmm. like, like that's how close they are these people. So it's just dope to see like, you know, 
things like coming from the community, being kept inside the community, but also like growing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, that's almost like, cause their dad rapped too. So it's like the family torch is being carried on. So it's a really, it's a really dope thing. Yeah, that's it's beautiful. Really I'm gonna definitely ask Tyrone for some uh, lessons. He might not know everything, but he got something <laughs> oh, yeah. from his pops. <laughs> no, the, all them niggas can dance. Oh, okay. All Thanks, that's all I need dance. to know. I'm yeah. next time I see him. <laughs> I'm West Coast, so it's naturally in my blood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all them niggas. But I need, <laughs> I need a little bit of fucking technical work. Uh, <laughs> technical yeah, work. What do I go after this move? Yeah, what do I do after I roll to the hand? Like, like, you want me to walk out that door? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's get into this first game. Yeah. You ready? Oh. First game is behind the post. All right. So basically, every guest that comes on to the podcast, I scour their social media and ask for context behind certain things they post. All right. Yeah. And this is oh, gonna be good. Because I followed you. Be messy. <laughs> it might be. It might be. I don't want to incriminate. You know. I just got questions. That's all I got. Just, just That's couple, all right. He got a base in just Alaska. Couple, just, uh, right. hey, yo, I've never. I've never um, deleted a post, except for uh, like when you know, like oh, repost this for a giveaway. Mm -hmm. like, don't win the giveaway. Mm -hmm. I'll delete that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, right, man, I, you ain't gonna I, stay on my timeline. Uh, exactly. <laughs> like you go. You go all the way down my shit. You the first. You'll see the first thing. Twenty thirteen. Ooh, shit, I'm out of, I found something in 2016. Mm -hmm. All right, so first thing on this, I went through Instagram and Twitter, so a little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> so you posted this on Instagram July 31st, 2016. The caption is, when the party starts chanting, the roof is on fire. <laughs> but then they realize it's just a hot nigga passed out on the roof. <laughs> I want to know... Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> uh, what? I want to know... <laughs> I want to know. I got you. Uh, I want to know what happened, what happened, and how'd you end up in this position? I think it's, uh, what is it, six words? <laughs> <laughs> you say Sizzler? Sizzler? Sizzler could do no, you two I, I think it's six. I thought it was six words. It's seven words. Okay. Uh, Xanax is a hell of a drug. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, mm. yeah uh, man. That was like. That it was. That was like towards the <laughs> end of my whole like Xanax wave, man. I was I was big on the Xans like all through college, mm -hmm. like way before. I mean, shit's been niggas three six mafia been rapping about this shit since ninety four, but like way before repopularized, nigga. I was mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. shit like since. Oh uh, man, since like two thousand nine, niggas was on the Xans. It got crazy like towards you know, 2016 towards the end of my stint. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was just one of those nights, man. <laughs> man it, it was a, it was a, um, they were having an album release party at the Dope Spot. I believe it was a Moon Ensemble, the band Moon Ensemble was okay. having their art, their album release. It had a bunch of balloons like up on the roof. And if you've been to the Dope Spot, like if you're on the second floor, you can access the roof by climbing out of the bathroom window. Oh man, so, I... I, I seen that. I yeah. seen the thought. Shout out to the thought. He was chasing his cat. I yeah. seen him. That's, that's a funny sight. Anyways, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> that could, that could be a dangerous sight. Uh, that cat is fucking crazy. My nigga. We'll, we'll talk about that cat later. For sure. <laughs> but um, man, let me tell you. Okay, so yeah, it was just like a, an event was popping off. Near Mad Zand out uh, was like being super friendly, passing Xanax out, like just like fucking handing shit out, like mm -hmm. like hotcakes, nigga, and. <laughs> and um, Somehow I wound up on the roof and was on the roof and they had these big old bags of balloons because they were performing right below that part of the roof. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole thing was like they had other bands opening and they were going to like they were the headliner, of course, because it's their album release. But when the music dropped, you know, these niggas going to release hella balloons from the roof and mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. I'm up there way before these niggas are supposed to release balloons, and I'm literally just like kicking balloons and shit like, <laughs> off the roof. And then it's like somebody was like seeing me down there, was like, "Yo, somebody get June!" <laughs> so they sent somebody up there to get me, and then they're like, "Yo, yo, you gotta cut it out. You can, stop, stop kicking balloons. What the fuck are you doing?" And I was like, "All right, well, fuck this shit. I'm going to sleep." Nigga, and I laid down right there, and, and that's went where to I sleep. woke up. <laughs> like that was the craziest shit ever. Like it was like the movies where niggas like. Wake up after a shipwreck, and they all you see is the sky. Mm -hmm. The first thing you see is the sky all around you. Like it was like that. And I was looking dead up, and was covered in ant bites because it was like summertime. Ooh, yeah, but yeah, that's the, the gist of that post. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sounds like a good night. Yeah, it was good. Party with June. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. Going to Twitter. Posted this uh, January 23rd, 2017. Okay. I think of myself as a sensitive, intelligent human being, but with the soul of a clown that forces me to blow it at the most crucial moments. Mm. (laughs) Ah. I think I can resonate with that. Yeah, man. Because yeah, I believe I I'm that. a sensitive, intelligent human being. Yeah. But that's I do quote. got a little clown. Like, I, I, like the, I find a sense of humor in some things that maybe I shouldn't, mm-hmm. which is probably ruin. I shouldn't say ruin, but just strain certain friendships back when I was younger. I think it makes you a great person. Bill's character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, babe. It's the love here. It's I love you. Love. I love you. <laughs> It's the love of the game. <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little, if you rewind on that one. Yeah, man. Um, like, where, where, where has a situation like that kind of uh, reared its head? Where uh, you, 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 you know, you, you're intelligent, you're sensitive, but the clown in you kind of maybe. Um, shit, I'm trying to think of a recent one. Because it's like. Basically, the gist of it is like you know, it's, it's it's everybody does it, or everybody feels like they do it. It's like some you know, it's the it's basically the statement like you, you you're your biggest, you're your worst enemy, yeah. you're your own worst enemy. Yeah, mm-hmm. basically what I was trying to get across. And I don't know, um, I guess yeah, we could think of like back to the the Xanax and shit. Like my my first car was my dream car. It was a 1988 Chevy Caprice. Mm-hmm. And I nice, yeah. think it was the box Chevy was whipping mm-hmm. the shit out of it. Like, never had any problems with it. It was like, I was only the third owner, only had like 70,000 miles on it. Wow. You know? All highway? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fucking pristine, like, didn't touch the car. Everything still had the original hubcaps from 88. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and, yeah. um... I wrecked the shit out of that car coming back from a gig <laughs> on, uh, in Riverside. And it's just like, yeah, it's like I, I waited all this time. Like, I think I wanted that car since I was 12 years old. And I got it when I turned 19. And I, pay, I paid for it with my own money. Like, did, did everything myself, basically. Went through all the trouble and shit and of saving up and woo-woo-woo. And finally got it and been cruising it. Only had it for, like, a couple of years. And then just because a nigga didn't want to stop, didn't nigga didn't want to put the bars down, nigga mm-hmm. wrecked the car. Like, luckily, I walked away without a scratch. Yeah. Nobody got hurt, you yeah. know, but the car is done. And, like, that's one of them situations where it's just, like, like it, nobody told me to pop a Xanax. Mm-hmm. Nigga, nobody told me to, to try to drive home. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? But a nigga did it. And it's like, I lost my fucking baby. <laughs> through the wire. Yeah, through, the wire huh? through the wire. Through the wire. Went through the wire. Shit, man. That's when I got on my Kanye Three Summers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last for behind the post. All right. Posted this June twenty eighth, two thousand eighteen. Back to Instagram. Mm-hmm. Live your best life with the shroom emoji, and it's this picture. <laughs> And hey, I don't, hey, you don't have to hey. give too much context unless there's a woman, not, a woman in your life right now. This could be the woman. I don't know. No, I just, want, I just, I just, no. I just want, have you ever taken shrooms out of a girl's butt? And would you ever do it? Have I ever? Because this is what this is the question that led me to this. Like, yeah. I was like, like where that, did the mushroom come from? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did where, it come from? Where, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you plan on putting it in uh, there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Um, that was uh, I was kicking it with this female, this woman, and um, yeah, I just had mushrooms on decky, and I think she was like on the phone or something. So I was like, "Fuck it, and it photo op, nigga," and did that. But yeah, it was like at the time I felt like yeah, nigga was living his best life because I had a little money on deck. I mm-hmm. think I had had an I just. Cause I, I my Impala is new. That that car is new to me. I've only had that for a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Before that, I had the Saturn, the Saturn Ion, and like before that, I hadn't driven for like two years. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, nigga had, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nigga had a car again. The hustle was cracking. Like had a little, a little tenderoni and all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was, I was living my best life. <laughs> and you know, shrooms, shrooms are a hell of a drug too. Yes, they're they're dope though. That's way better, way better than Xanax. That's like that's my Xanax now. Is microdose mushrooms. Mm-hmm. It's like I th- that shit is like organic Xanax. Mm-hmm. Bro. You take like a little point two, point three. Mm-hmm. As long as you don't have like a crazy high tolerance, or you didn't just take shrooms like a few days before, 
like you'll you'll feel that shit. Mm-hmm. Not in like the fucking I'm smacked off shrooms feeling, but just like the that vibe. Just like the whew, like that relief you get when like you mad as hell and you hit the blunt and then you're like, okay, you know maybe it's not that. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> you get that for like a six hours. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's a it's a way uh, longer period of time, but I feel like. Like they're starting to legalize that shit in mad mm-hmm. states, bro. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's only a matter of time before it like becomes a reality. Like that, hopefully, you know that will be the new Xanax, mm-hmm. you know, rather than Xanax or the the fake Xans is going around the pressies and all that shit. The dopest thing he said, if I didn't catch that, I asked him about the picture, and he said, "Oh yeah, she was just on the phone, so I decided <laughs> to take a picture." My life ain't really like that, where it's just a girl in them pants is <laughs> on the phone around me, <laughs> and, and I can just lay, just hey, take a pic. <laughs> Here's the quote. I was living my best life. It just was a little it. peek into June's, uh, June's little, you know, <laughs> what you don't see on camera. Yeah, that part. Uh, I got to get a cameraman, dude. I swear to God, like, man, we'd all be famous already. I'm putting, <laughs> when I blow, I'm putting everybody on. So, yeah, if, if I had a fucking little camera crew, Follow me around. Shit. Well, yeah. I want to know a day in the life now. Right? I kind of oh, want to be a fly on the wall, maybe. Uh, one time. <laughs> well, I promise I won't fly around. I'll just stay on the well, wall. Uh, <laughs> you get a fucking contact like a motherfucker. I, I, <laughs> I, I know, in addition to the music, you have a little side. A few, yeah. Is it cool to talk about them? Yeah, we can talk about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Stripping! Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm a male I'm stripper. stripper. No. The sexiest <laughs> nigga in promotion. Shout out to the game. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Call back. <laughs> But you you you're also would you say a farmer? I'm a farmero. Yeah, I'm a uh, in the medicinal a, a, a game. pharmaceutical mm-hmm. uh, we, engineer. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. What, what's the title instead of just saying grower? Because it seems like you're more active than just saying you're a grower. Um, I'd say novice grower. Because, okay. You know, like novice. People... I've seen the pictures. Oh, and what are we growing? Novice. Marijuana. <laughs> oh, <Ooh. Ooh. Ooh. laughs> the best of the sticky. Uh. It's just like I say I'm a novice grower because uh like the the term master grower kind of gets thrown around a lot, you know, like you see like the news programs on it and shit like oh, like master growers make up to a quarter million dollars a year. Yeah. Know, blah, blah blah. It's like I I, it's just, I there's no such thing as a master of anything. I feel like it's like Ooh, you know, speak like on that. Life, you know, it's just uh you can apply like any any trade or any craft or whatever to like life like we're the the lesson is never ending because you know the shit just keeps going new mm-hmm. things are discovered Definitely. there's new ways to approach things there's new ways to not approach things you know like and i feel like yeah just to say you're a master of something you kind of like shortchanging yourself because this shit ain't over till it's over so there's no way you can know it all it's like I I learned that from jazz, like being a student of jazz. Like there's there's um, you know, niggas will look at a cat like John Coltrane or a cat like Miles Davis and think like they had it all, but them niggas, they wasn't done. Yet. They weren't. They weren't done. Even you know? Duke Ellington, he was yeah. still producing on his death. You know what I'm saying like mo- exactly like motherfuckers is still trying to figure out what the fuck Jimi Hendrix was doing. Motherfuckers is still trying to figure hmm. out what the fuck Coltrane and how was they doing did it and how. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like. Long story short, short story long, like, yeah, I I, I, couldn't, I consider myself a novice grower because I've been growing for, like, 10 years, but there's still, like, so much that I don't know and so much mm-hmm. more to learn. Like, so, I, yeah, I'm a novice. How did you get into it? <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, by accident, the first time I ever grew a plant um, was, you know, Niggas was when we was smoking Reggie back in the day, smoking Reggie Miller. Smoking we all did it. <laughs> yeah, you know you get like a ball like this for seven dollars. Is like the, that. Yeah, the, the stress, flattest stress you've ever seen. The or Mexican, AZ. that good Mexican <laughs> brick. You know, hella seedy. So we in the backyard picking, popping the seeds out. 
not like thinking like yo the seeds are landing in the grass mm-hmm. and i guess like some time went by and like little seedlings started sprouting up mm-hmm. out of the grass and um i think my, my dad found it and i got in trouble for it but it was crazy because that's how that's how i basically knew like I was meant to be a grower because a nigga grew something without even trying. <laughs> uh, thank the you. ultimate green thumb. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, like that's that's kind of when it started, and then like going down further down the line, like Ventura. I knew some people who had to get the fuck out of Ventura, and they had to leave a lot of things behind. And I like took the shit, like took over for them basically. And that's kind of like when I first started. Like anything I get into, I research the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. I've been like that since I was a kid. Like, uh, my first pet was an iguana. Before I could get that iguana, like I'm talking like a nigga would print like pages, like booklets down there, mm-hmm. just like facts, information on iguana, like just to try like. Cause my mom would be like, "You ain't getting this shit if you don't know nothing about it." Mm-hmm. Basically, mm-hmm. so it's like I had to always like. That's what my mom would always say I could have been a lawyer because I always had to state my case anytime I wanted something. So, and they would go do the research, come with like a pamphlet for her, like, bam, I know all this shit. Like, what's you know? <laughs> give me my iguana. Give me my fucking lizard <laughs> now or I'll sue your ass. <laughs> <laughs> for time wasted. <laughs> Half of that check uh, is mine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I fucks with that. But yeah, I, I forget what was that. What was the what was the point of the iguana story? The point of the iguana story, I was asking. Oh yeah, the growing. Yeah, uh, just yeah. Anything I got into, I, I basically like researched the shit first. So like when I got those plants in Ventura, like I really didn't know what the fuck I was doing. But niggas just start going online, googling shit. Like people ask me hell of questions, like hell of questions about growing. And like if you're listening to this podcast right now and you have anything to ask me about growing, I'll tell you. To go and Google that shit, Google, because <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's you just it, it makes you look bad. It, when you come to somebody with questions that are easily accessible, it's just like Fact. Oh, so you want me to do all the work for you? You don't want the answers. You just want me to do the work. Yeah. You want me to catch a fish. You don't want me how to teach you how to fish. Yeah. And they wonder why you make you that know? face or why you have that disposition, like, I'm like, ah. Uh, so you want to know how far Texas is from here? You asking me? Yeah. Uh-huh. Or those people that post those questions on Facebook, like anybody know? How to do? It's like, yeah, motherfucker, type that. Google. In. <laughs> take, take that, that copy post. paste. <laughs> My nigga, Google. <laughs> Google. <laughs> and figure out the answer. You'll for find real. like ten YouTube videos. <laughs> you will. It's just, that's a that's a fact. That big Jim fact. rewind. Go back and catch that. <laughs> rewind. <laughs> Simple Google, man. <laughs> Before we get into your project. I, I first wanted to talk about, so how did you come about uh, with your musical styling? Did you rap first and then start producing, or were you producing and then rapping, or was it just both? Because, like you said, you were just researching it and was like, I'm going. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, do you want, like, just uh, producing and rapping, or do you just want musicality, like, in general? Just how did you become June? Um, well... I, I come from, like, my dad's side of the family is really musical. My mom's side of the family is really musical. Um, when I was six, I was in the, I was in the, the youth, the, the church choir, the children's church choir for, like, from age six to 12. I had no choice because my mom was the choir director. Mm, yeah, the no choir. choice. No choice. <laughs> yeah. No choice. So, like, that's kind of where it started. And then from there, like, around age 12 is, like, when you start getting into instruments in mm-hmm. elementary school. Yeah. And I picked up the, I started with the alto sax, and then from there moved on to percussion, because around right in that time is like when I started to get more serious about rap music. Okay. And um, I guess yeah, the production definitely came first. Okay. Because like I had like actual beat machines and shit. Like I had an Alesis SR16. Um, I had a a Boss brand. Uh. A drum machine that I don't remember the model number on, but like I had these drum machines and I would make little beats and I had like a keyboard, like I had like a little computer desk set up in my room with just like my production station, it was like a old ass like Yamaha keyboard, mm-hmm. and these drum machines, and I would just literally uh, use those little tape recorders and just put that shit right there with the mic and mm-hmm. just like record me playing the shit out loud. 
Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how that started. And then I found out about Fruity Loops. This is like 2002. Okay. Like right before I started really writing. And uh, saved up my little money. Uh, had my mom cop the, the bare minimum Fruity Loops for $49. <laughs> and that's kind of where it started. Like got into it and just really try to learn like how to use it the best way I could. And it wound up getting, I think she wound up deleting it. So like I had to go back to just using the demo version and the demo version. It's like you can still save the track. You can't save the track, but you can still like keep it. You basically, you just have to finish everything and export it. Yeah, you can't just come back to it. Yeah, you can't come back to it. Once you close that shit, it's gone forever. Mm -hmm. Um, So like I, I went, I was doing that for a while. And then kind of got back into, like, the physical drum machines. And then, like, some years, like, I kind of, like, put that shit aside for a minute. I'm, like, focused more on rapping. And around, like, around, like, 2008, I found out about Ableton. Mm -hmm. That's when I kind of got into Ableton, which is, like, what I still use now. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that's, like, pretty much it. Like, I... uh, it was the production was first, and then, then the raps came. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it was like almost like neck and neck, like same year, is when I decided like this is something that I, I that I might want to do. I fucks with that, and then now jumping back in the future now or the present time, yeah. and you recently just dropped your project. Your orange upside down cake. It's a beat tape, uh, seven beats. Uh, it's mostly just like I was on my loop shit. I was feeling like uh, I was feeling mad villainous, uh, mm. mad libus mm-hmm. <laughs> ish, <laughs> mad lib esque. I don't know, <laughs> however you want to put it. But yeah, I just put I I had a bunch of dope loops that I just been sitting on, and like uh, I think how it all came to be was like like the Kobe shit, nigga. Like, the Kobe shit happened, and that was kind of like a wake-up call for me. I mean, I feel like a lot of these icons we've been losing along the... Within like, a year, two like, years, dude, yeah. it's been... It's, I feel like, I mean, I don't want to sound selfish, but it's like, a, like I'm sure everybody needs a wake-up call, but mm-hmm. I felt like that shit was like sp- trying to speak to me. Like, yeah. nigga, get on your shit. Yeah. Like, tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Get your shit done. You're sitting on all this music, and you're not doing nothing with it. Like, you have all these ideas, and you're not doing nothing with them. And, like, yeah, that that Kobe shit kind of pushed me over the edge. And I was just, like, sitting in the living room over at the dope spot. I was just like, fuck it, nigga. I'm dropping a beat tape today. Have no promo behind it, nothing. Just fucking drop that shit. I was, like, here. And, um, yeah, like, it's been, it's been pretty well received so far. Like, mm-hmm. everybody's, like, reposting that shit, fucking with it. And it's cool because, like, it, it, I've been, I dropped, like, two or three singles in the past couple of months. Like the rapping. Greedo, yeah. yeah, Greedo and um Baby Nicotina. Baby Nicotina and mm-hmm. there's another one on the way with, with Keto, uh Zen Stugly. Um yeah, we man, fuck. Like that, <laughs> that one Yo, you see that face you just said, right there? man, <laughs> fuck, hey, y'all don't know. <laughs> y'all don't know. Yeah, that shit's gonna be fucking crazy. Like we we took like a little like retreat. The homie was um uh, house sitting in Pinion Hills mm-hmm. and he's like like former I guess you call him a dope spot alumni. Mm-hmm. Like he he used to live at the house, but he moved out. But his friends, parents needed somebody to watch the house, and he was like, "You can have people over, just you know, don't Clean fuck up. shit up." Be yeah. respectful. Yeah, yeah. So we could drive all the way out there. It's like an hour and a half drive, and we were out there. I think for like six days, and between like, between like me, keto, the homie, me, Zen Stokely, the homie Rich Ad, um, uh, and the homie Dre Day, and I think. Jai, Jai pulled up and Jay Souls just pulled up and <laughs> I'm trying to get niggas rap names it's on right. here because <laughs> no, <man. laughs> hey, they, are, a, they are alumni of the podcast I'm gonna be hot because yeah, I'm gonna be hot if a nigga try to call me by my government name on the podcast right I'm Malcolm be, Little find you <laughs> but, uh, yeah we basically in, in six days or five to six days we knocked out like 11 tracks between all of us mm-hmm. and it was just like from scratch like niggas made the beats rewriting in the next room and just knocking them out bang 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 I think Zen Zen Stokely had the most tracks finished because you know that that guy that nigga's a machine. Yeah, but it never stops. Yeah, <laughs> like I dropped those singles and I don't know. I just feel like I hadn't dropped a beat in a while and I didn't want to just release one beat. So I I think I just yeah I just came up with the idea to just drop the tape like as a as a whole because I I, I didn't want people to forget that I, I'm a producer first okay. at the end of the day. 
So that's the most important. Mm hmm. Yeah, like, I'm Baby Kanye, man. Like, it was always about the production first. The productions what got him to, well, the Kanye, Kanye. that we know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm, I'm trying to, that's basically, yeah, I've been using that formula. So, like, I got to. The orange upside down cake was just my way of letting people know, like, I'm, uh-huh. I'm still uh-huh. here. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. you thought she was nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> she just like, Hold that. Like, <laughs> that. That's all that was, though. And I, I'm thinking about making it a series. So, like, I'm definitely going to try to drop a beat tape every month this year. So, like, I already have the February one lined up. It'll be different. It won't be, like, part of the, the orange upside down cake series, okay. but... Um, yeah, I'm thinking of doing like, you know, Orange Upside Down Cake 2, Orange, Orange Upside Down Cake 3, like at least like every other month. And just, yeah, just trying to get as much beats out there as possible. Like that's one of the goals for this year. What's one of the beats that most, st- that stands out the most for you on this project? Oh, man. That you really feel like, yeah, I did that. I cooked it. Uh, Unfazed is okay. like, yeah, I fucking love that shit. I don't really, I don't really like listening to my own shit too much, hmm. but like unfazed, I fucks with that. I can listen to that any time of the day, as many times as I want. And it's unfazed, and there's moments, and moments, moments stands out to me, and it's one of my favorite because it reminds me of the, the, even though like this whole tape, like the whole style, like the stylization, the way that I put the tape together and put the beats together was more like on some, like some loop shit, like some mad lib shit, but. I feel like the song Moments like was uh like uh, an ode to Dilla. Like it was like okay. some Dilla shit. Okay. And like, it just reminded me of something like like a like a throwaway from Donuts or something. And like, so yeah, Moments and the song Unfazed stand out to me. Those are like the best well, Unfazed is probably the best received. The next uh, the next best received would be Illustrious, I think, but like my two favorites is Unfazed and Moments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hard cut. <laughs> One second. Yep. Wow. It just started. It just started stacking for half a second. Shut up. Restart this. Just oh. press pause for a second. Hmm. Right. One second. DJ. Yo, yo, touch mic. Ooh. Touch mic. Testicles, testicles. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> 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 And just like that, we're back. You know, talking about Master P, who are some of your influences that that inspired you in your music journey? Be it a producer, artist, or just anyone behind the scenes? Oh man. Um one of my first influences was the big homie Freeze. It was just like a cat from back there in Anchorage. And like like it's funny how like a nigga started writing. Like we used to um we used to write our rhymes at church. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so look, in between be, choir practice. No, no, we'd be at church and if be somebody like the found those notebooks. Woo. Yeah. That's, bro. <laughs> if they woo if, they, if only they knew. Like, we started off, we would write our rhymes in church, and, like, after service, we like, compare rhymes. Like, yeah, nigga, oh, oh, you only wrote 116? Like, I got three. What were you doing? Like, you know, type of shit. And uh, so he was, like, one of my first big influences because he showed me how to write a 16 or structure a 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, he showed me, like, the importance of, like, lyrical content, like, not to try to, as much as you can, try not to be rapping about shit you ain't about, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> Which is like a, a page somebody a, a lot of people could take a page out of that book. Man, these 90%. days, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely Freeze is one of my big influences. But I mean, that's not anybody y'all gonna know. But um, outside of like local niggas, uh, shit. I mean, we gotta go with, of course, like Dilla, Madlib on the production side. Yeah, Dilla, Madlib, Kanye, mm-hmm. Dre. Um, the Alchemist, man, that nigga has been putting it down for so long. Mm-hmm. Like that nigga needs a lifetime achievement award because, like, <laughs> all those dope ass fucking cuts from Mob Deep, mm-hmm. like that was like nineteen year old Alchemist, mm-hmm. this white kid from Hollywood making these gritty ass Queensbridge nigga tracks. Yeah, like what the fuck, like 
Yeah, so the Alchemist is definitely on that producer side of the list. Uh, MC's influence, uh, of course, you know, I consider myself Baby Nicotina, so it wouldn't be Andre it, Nicotina. It would be, you know, it wouldn't they be right. They call me Andre. If I didn't shout it out. <laughs> uh, my name's Nikki, but you can call me Dre. I hit uh. the crap table with a follow and a tray. Uh. I party through LA. Bitch, what I gotta say? Uh. Your minds. Girls with a zodiac sign. Your minds. All up in my eyes, you a dime. Your minds. That nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like Nicotina, for sure. Yeah. Um, Mac Dre. Like, hey, the goat, the bro. Yeah, you know? hey. Man, dude. Dude, dun, 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 dude dun. cause like, Mac Dre came, dun, before dun. he died, he came oh, to on. Anchorage and did songs with niggas, man. Like, mm. like there's wow. at least three songs I can name that the hard, the most hardcore Mac Dre fans have never heard. Cause they were all recorded with like, local Anchorage niggas. Yeah. Cause Thiz used to come to Alaska all the time. Like, like, I'll shout out like E-40 and Thiz, Entertainment, nigga. Them niggas were probably some of the first rappers coming to Anchorage, like and making money. Wow, because oh. you know, like niggas wasn't touring out there before then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm telling you, niggas didn't know people lived out dude, there. Dude, like yeah, it was like real? I swear <laughs> to God, it was like E40 came out uh, right around like the whole like Tell Me When to Go shit mm-hmm. was popping off, and like uh, shortly before that, uh, you know, I think Mac Dre passed in '04. Mm-hmm. So I know like sometime in '03, like Thiz was heavy in Alaska. Like niggas was the drug and the music, um, so yeah, I, I think like Mac Dre is one of the first rappers to come to Alaska, and yeah, E Forty, and then later on, uh, Lil Boosie came up there. Mm-hmm. Wow! And then, like just like the more niggas started coming up there, the more you start seeing bigger acts, and like now, like the the city is like night and day from when I left. Like there's they built so much shit since I left. and like there's a, a lot more appeal for artists to come up there, mm-hmm. you know, but. Definitely, like, yeah, that's one of the reasons, probably one of the reasons I fuck with Mac Dre so heavy, because he was, like, one of the first niggas to show you, like, yo, they, these niggas are attainable. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like, being in Alaska, is, you, you have to fucking jump on a plane and go catch your, your, catch your favorite artist rapping or whatever, you know, and these niggas, like, broke that barrier down. It was like, mm-hmm. nah, fuck that, we coming, we catching a plane to y'all. Mm-hmm. And that was always a dope thing to me. Um, How accessible is Canada to Alaska? This is highly accessible. So I feel like that's probably a, g- a good reason why a lot of those guys, instead of going out of the country, mm-hmm. touch some of these Canadian fans, yeah. just go to Alaska the ones, and have them travel. Right. It's the, just the one thing is like um, the whole, like, if you're a felon, you know, you can't go into Canada. Yeah, if you're a felon that's in a good the U.S., point too. you can't go in Canada. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't get, like, that part of it. But mm-hmm. for sure, like, the, I feel like the whole, like, there's, there's some Canadian, there's a lot of Canadian influence on Alaska and on Anchorage, like as far as Canadians are hella nice, mm-hmm. <laughs> and like I feel so like, I've heard, yeah, yeah, they're hella nice people, like and they leave the door unlocked, type shit. Yeah, I remember I that mean, from Michael Moore's. We don't do that. <laughs> now that's one thing we don't do in Anchorage because niggas will come <laughs> and get your shit. But cold case is trying to get hot. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, sheesh, the ice is melting. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> I just know that, um, fuck, I don't even know what I was saying. Um, what was I saying? You were talking about how uh, a lot of people don't get certain aspects of going to Canada, but oh, by yeah, going yeah. to Canada. Ca- Canada is like, the people are hella nice, and I feel like that part of the shit bleeds over into Alaska, because, you know, like, if you fall, if your car breaks down the side of the road out here in California, you break down the side of the tent, Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody stopping for your ass. Ain't nobody, I don't think facts. I want. Help I don't think I want anybody. On you both know? ends, it's like I'll tell them I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, I don't triple A okay. on the way. It's like yo, yo, we got you. Got to we got to start it now. All right, give me the keys, nigga. <laughs> 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 Niggas help you push the car like to their house. Nigga. Yeah, like, it's, it's mine now. It's like, both of ours. Like, just keep it at my house. <laughs> you gonna pay the payments though? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I feel like in Alaska. I've been on the side of the road so many times, and there's always somebody to stop and help. Okay. And like, that, that's a cool thing. Like, that part of Canada bleeds over. But, yeah, definitely nobody leaving doors unlocked. Nobody's saying A for no reason. <laughs> and we're not uh, drowning things in syrup. Oh, is that is that <laughs> heavy in Canada? Yeah, the syrup is the maple syrup, man. That's like their it's one of the, I think it's one of their main exports, money. Oh shit. Canadians are known for the syrup. Okay. And just putting it on anything. 
grits. Or the poutine. The fun. poutine, which I will fuck with. What's the poutine? poutine? That's like, uh, it's like, imagine, okay, you know, you put gravy on mashed potatoes. Would you put gravy on french fries and eat it with a fork? No. Mm-mm. It's, it sounds crazy, but it's actually fire. It's like cheese fries, but with and they put gravy on it, too. So it's like cheese and gravy all on top of some fries, and it tastes like just like loaded mashed potatoes. Basically. You know what? Yeah, I was just about to say, that, that's just mashed potatoes, yeah. but in a fried form. Mm-hmm. That's poutine. That, that, yeah, that, that actually sounds that's like, like the smack. That's right? like for the smack foods. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You drink like two or three of these and you go get you some poutine. <laughs> <laughs> Not pool's A, but Modelo, poutine. Modelo, sponsor the show. Pool's A comes after. <laughs> <laughs> Sap! Year. Yeah. Sap. Sap! You're Warren. Sap! <laughs> it's our second game. Is that is that is that, is that, is that, is that all right. <laughs> the second game? As you as you can already know, it's called Sap. sap! There you go. It was like the ex- two exclamation points. <laughs> right, right. So Sap is uh, stands for song, album, performance. Okay. All right. Uh, it's an acronym. Right. Yeah. Ooh, you doing scholars. it? Scholars. Let's go. Scott Squad. Yo. Join. <laughs> Scott Squad. Read a book. Man. All right, so I will give you three different options. You'll tell me which one you'd rather do a song with, an album with, and a perform, and who you want to perform with. Okay. Out of the choices I give you, all right? All right. So the first one, Joey Badass, ASAP Rocky, Vic Mensa. Sap! Okay, um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. I will do a song with. I'll do a song with Rocky so I can get that check. Because if I do a song with Rocky, it's most likely going to be on somebody's radio station. Okay. Um, Fact. And Rocky's dope. I fuck with like the whole like new New York shit. Like I fuck with the Beast Coast movement. Okay. I feel like they're part of that, which is why like second. What was this? That was my song, the album. Sap, sap. <laughs> song, <Jesus>. album. <laughs> song, song, album, performance. Okay, so the song with Rocky, album with Joey, because Joey's that that nigga's cold. I think creatively, mm-hmm. you guys would mesh. Man, that would be crazy. Mm, like produced yeah, by man. me. Oh man. Be yeah, easy. these are all produced and by you. And that nigga's a crazy. You know that nigga wrote that Post Malone shit, right? Yeah. Oh yes, that yes, yes. Whatever. Rockstar. The white. The yeah, rockstar. Yeah. Oh, rock. Uh, rockstar. Rock okay. yeah. yeah. So like he's, you know, even when Joey's not dropping, he's still eating. Um, but yeah, song with Rocky, album with uh with Joey, with Joey, and I guess just performance with Vic. I guess performance with Vic. See, that's why I was interested to see where you're gonna play yeah, it's Vic. Like, uh, that's... like uh... <laughs> I mean, I, just, I don't have any problems with Vic Mensa. It's just like. I don't know. I feel like he just got short changed. Like he was, he came up with Chance. Chance pushed kind of forward, the style. huh? Kind of bit the style. I I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I didn't hear any Vic before I heard Vic and Chance together. So I just thought like they were just complimenting each other. Wasn't Vic and Kiss these days? Was that yes. Vic? Mm-hmm. I heard Vic way before Chance, and I don't I don't and? what. Band theme. Yeah, the group. Mm-hmm. They're dope. Yeah, today. It's going. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So that's the only reason. Only, only reason I personally say Chance stole Vic because I did. I I fortunately was able to see Chance when he was on tour with Gambino. Mm-hmm. All right, before he even dropped uh, Acid Rap. Acid Rap, right, like, right. you know. But I had already heard Kiss these days a year prior to that. So you're like, boy. Yeah. No, no. Honestly, when I, when I was at, when I was in there, I was like, he kind of sound like that nigga from Kiss these days. Oh, that's crazy. Like, I didn't even know that. That's just me though. That's just me. That's yeah, why I man. say he bit that. Mm. I just feel like, yeah, he got the short end of the stick. Yeah. Like, I feel like some people create we, their short end of the stick though. Yeah, too. it's like it's like a double edged double edged sword because it's like without chance we wouldn't 
I feel like we wouldn't know who Vic Mensa is as well as we know who Vic Mensa is. But Inner Tape was just as good as Acid Rap. It and was. And they dropped around the same time. It was. And if not, it I was more melodic. I'm uh, with you. Melodic. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm on your side. 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 I'm on your I'm with you. You don't got to convince me. You don't have to convince me. It's the people you got to convince. True. Them. They. True. I mean, I guess Chance was more pop ready. Mm hmm. It, uh, especially with songs like Coco Buzzer Kisses yeah. and um, that, nigga, that was the first song I heard by Chance. Like, no, no, okay, who the that, fuck is this? Oh, and Juice, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Juice, Juice, Juice. Yeah. Thirsty, yeah. thirsty, yeah. try to juice. Yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah you feel me? <laughs> but uh, in a, in, the internet tape just had. Mm-hmm. I mean, it had the bars, but melodically, it was way better mm-hmm. put together. Chance had a story though, my nigga. He got right. suspended for 10 days and made a fucking groundbreaking mixtape in All those right. 10 days. He All called right. it 10 days. <laughs> All right. And Vic has recently put on a dress. And All right. Good. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not here wearing I'm kilts and shit. I'm not, I'm not arguing. Vic's trying to reconnect best, with his Scottish best, roots, my nigga. Right. I was, like, I'm not, I'm not uh, talking about know, today. Know, know, yeah, yeah. yeah this is a totally different I just want to throw a little shade. Yo. This, <laughs> this is a little if, bit more angry of Vic because of how things played out since yeah. the two tapes dropped. Mm-hmm. If you would have told me, like, that Vic Mensa was going to be this Vic Mensa, I would <laughs> never believe you. Ever. never take No. Ever. No. No? Nigga got, like, Lip rings and fucking this nigga like he's on that punk wave that hip that he hip hop is? punk wave like but then the next day trying he's not. to like fucking weird. for some reason make I, waves I thought shit. he was gonna be like I hate to say this era's Lupe fiasco mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but mm. I'm I'm thirty so these twenty year olds probably, yeah, yeah. they don't remember <laughs> food and liquor like I remember uh, food and liquor yeah. like that was groundbreaking oh, yeah. Yeah. like come on now free chili. <laughs> 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 Revenge of the Nerds mixtape is still the hardest mixtape ever. But anyway, <laughs> I I don't know. For me personally, I just thought Vic was going to be this mm-hmm. generation's Lupe, but then he uh, kind of got angry. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he just and he's been playing out on that anger, which yeah. I understand. But it's like, bro, grow up. Yeah, mm-hmm. and go out. Yeah. You know what I mean? What is, is he angry at Chance? What is he angry at? <laughs> I'm trying he to might be. He, <laughs> he might be. Like, 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 that's a lane he can't stay. They fell out, right? Skin, they did. The they they, they, yeah, yeah. He said that in a song, too. Yeah, they yeah. fell out. I think he's angry. There's only so many light skins that can beat up and rap. Yeah, and beat man. Up <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he's like looking at Chance and J. Cole, and he's like, fuck both y'all niggas. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I need attention. I need attention. He's pulling his curls out. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> But he beat Diggy. Diggy Simmons? Yeah. Damn, what yeah. happened, my man? Hey, he hey, he he had a moment. Yo, just, he had a little moment never. where it looked... Never? Come on. I think, nigga, I, we seen this nigga grow up. This nigga was wild <laughs> buns on Run's house. Now all of a sudden, we supposed to just respect this nigga hey. as an MC? I don't but know you have shit to oh, your dad compare is, him to his brother. But don't people... You have to. Oh, oh, Jojo yeah. was trash. Jojo but, was trash. Okay. Jojo was trash. In that comparison, yes. yes. Diggy over Jojo every day, all day. <laughs> You'll never see me hemmed up nowhere. Like, you will not see me as a meme as someone having their hands around my collar. <laughs> like, that nigga Jojo got ousted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> all right, but. Oh, shit. How about Diggy over Jaden? Because it seems like I'm putting okay. Jaden over Diggy. Yeah. Jayden Diggy, hard. probably a better rapper. But Jaden just, he has the, like the it factor, I guess you could say, when it comes to musicians. He mm-hmm. seems to make better artwork. <laughs> I'm not saying he didn't. I didn't say he didn't. I'm, I, I, I put didn't my case out there. That's all. I'm just putting my case out I've there. I've only heard the Icon song, so I can't really say. Yeah, that's what oh. I'm going off of, too. No, it's no, the Icon song. Uh, He's a better uh, businessman. Uh, what is it, Sire? He's got water and shit. Yeah, Sire. Sire, so, yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's name, Sire. no, uh, that shit's kind of hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I vouch for for the album. It looks really close if to the Fire Fest colors. That's why it, it, it wasn't hard. <laughs> the album wasn't hard. <laughs> Instead, like, I haven't heard it. And put together. Oh, uh, never mind. I'm biased. I'm, uh, not, I'm still looking at this nigga like, what? I saw you in fucking <laughs> what you gonna call it? Pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness. <laughs> Crying over your ragged ass Crying dog. Over some bullshit. Nigga, <laughs> nigga almost missed the interview. Uh, hustling <laughs> machines with your dad. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Out there hustling machines in the Bay Area uh, with your dad. Keep it moving, nigga. <laughs> All right. Great spirited conversation. I like that. Uh, yeah. Second for <laughs> Sap. Sap. 
KRS One. Oh shit! There's more than one sound. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. no. KRS One. Nas. Zapped. Nas. Black Thought. Okay. Um, KRS One. Nas. Black Thought. I all right, we're that. doing the um. Zap! I'm gonna go backwards this time. We're gonna do the performances of the KRS One because I opened for that nigga twice and he shuts the house down every time. So mm-hmm. it's on the show. Fucking. Like, crowd control off the fucking Richter. Like, everybody fucks with Chris. Um, <laughs> everybody fucks with Chris instead of everybody. Hey, Chris. <laughs> oh, I see that. I see that. I see that. Somehow, pun intended. intended. <laughs> Somehow, we got to say pun intended. Pun intended. Yeah, I don't know. No, the name of this episode should be pun intended. Oh, it will be. <laughs> it is. Pun intended. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was named 40 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. That was written down in oh, notes. Like, yeah, <laughs> we caught that. We caught Before it. Before even came here. All right. So, we got, for the performance... Karis one album. We do an album with Nas, because mm-hmm. why not? Like, well, who's the other guy? My bad. Black Thought. Oh, Black Thought. Shit. Um. Yeah, I'll do the album with. Do the album with Nas and the song with Black Thought, because Black Thought is hella slept on. Yeah, unfortunately. Cold ass, like probably one of the best lyricists we have. Like, alive. not one. He is. if he's not the, he the yeah, come if on, not the best. You know. Yo, for the longest time, I thought that was him on the Boondocks intro. That ain't him. No. Um, I didn't know that till like, last year. Ashura? Yeah, something like that. Ash- it's like, Ash- Ashura. Ashura. But yeah. I think he's a Philly nigga, though. Yeah. So it makes sense. Like you know? No, he is, because he also has a track with Talib. Okay. Well, yeah, then that's my... My SAP will be, yeah, song with, song with Black Thought, so I could fucking get that young Jimmy Fallon endorsement. Uh... Album with uh, Nas, because Nas is Nasir, Nasty Nas, and performance with KRS One, because that nigga is a ridiculous performer, still has it. And also, let me fix that. It's not Ashura, it's Ashuru. A S H E R U. Yeah. Speech guy. Google, nigga. Speech guy. I did that in my brain, nigga. You better go Google that shit. <laughs> speech guy, speech guy, speech guy, speech guy, speech guy, speech guy. All right, last one for Sap. Right. Ooh. Marky Mark. Flavor Flav, Coolio. That's all fucking whack. <laughs> yeah, that's all <laughs> fucking <laughs> whack. I'm gonna do the song. I'm gonna do the song with Marky Mark and just hope that like you know it makes it onto one of his next movies. Oh, good, good. All right, I like that. Good thinking. I'll do the <laughs> album with uh Ooh, with Flavor it. Flav oh, yeah. and like make that shit like yo this is the new public enemy nigga like market it like that yeah, yeah. and then um, have him do all your ad libs yeah yeah boy <laughs> <laughs> man, fucking, that nigga's looking man he's like this, this, the years have ca- caught up with Flav his his he, habits have caught up he's before. looking a little dusty yeah, yeah, man, have, yeah I've seen that yeah yeah, yeah. but um <laughs> performance would be cool yo cause I mean no matter like what walk of life you come from Nigga, everybody knows Gangsta's Paradise, man. So True. I just come out and fucking do, do motherfucking. <laughs> I do ad libs with this nigga. I do ad libs with this nigga on Gangsta's Paradise, and then I do my own song. Yeah, say it, <laughs> say it. I was gonna say, just don't crowd surf that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, am I missing something? What happened? What happened? We both looked at each other and thought the what same happened? thing. What happened? What did I don't miss? Cry- because Coolio uh, got beat up <laughs> <laughs> and robbed when he was crowd surfing. Uh, <laughs> when he jumped into the crowd and no one caught him. <laughs> so he <laughs> fell on the floor. They beat him up. And then they took his, <laughs> wall- they took his wallet. Who <laughs> threw this nigga at me? Uh. Oh, bro. I still to this day want to know what song he decided to crowd surf. <laughs> hey, with the baby. Dory. <laughs> Hope is fantastic voyage. <laughs> <laughs> he saw it go right in his head. The voyage, the voyage was a, a cruise in his head, but it turned out to be a shipwreck. Oh, oh I'm sorry, my God. Hey, Coolio, come on the show. Coolio, Yo, please come on the show. show. Coolio, do, do a song like with me. Let's perform together. Yeah, I know somebody has your wallet. Yo, <laughs> I think I know the nigga who has your wallet. Just come on the show. And I can, I can, Yo, Coolio, if you I perform with me, you. Coolio, if you perform with me, I'm gonna beat the brakes off anybody that reach near your pockets. I got you. I'll be your security and your backup vocals. I got you. He still need fifty one percent of the road. Got you. I got you. Got you. <laughs>
Let me see that. Let me see that. <laughs> Coolio is one of the very few people. Coolio is one of the very few people that I could be in the same room with. And have my hat off and not feel too bad Yo, about what's going on on the top of my head. <laughs> what is Coolio? Minute after minute, hour after hour. My hair keep falling out in the shower. <laughs> oh, Bar. <laughs> Pantene Pro V, nigga. Uh, Who's that? It's like, yo, <laughs> Selsun Blue, my nigga. Sign up. <laughs> Whew. Thank you for participating in SAP. SAP. <laughs> hey, June, real quick. Do you have any idols you want to take out? You want to beat or surpass? Anybody I want to surpass. Like me personally, I want to be bigger than Dave Chappelle. Oh, okay. I know everyone's going to be like, nigga, who is you? But in my own self, that's Part of who, me said that in my head, but then I was like, I love this nigga, so I, you can do it. <laughs> but you can do it? <laughs> yo, yo, man. Hey, yo, anything is possible, but nothing's for sure. That part. So the best thing you can do is just, you know, try work towards it. Try it. You know, with the... Because, honestly, when I'm on that's stage... A pretty, like, that's a pretty high trajectory. But so it's, it's like, even if you come up short, you're still above... I mean, when little, a lot of these little kids like Jason Tatum playing against Kobe in their backyard. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's just that's my Kobe. Yeah, mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle. And plus, mm-hmm. I just love that guy. Yeah, like Same. you know, flowers here, here for real. Salute. Yeah, you created me. But flowers. I'm playing. One, I'm playing one on one with Big Boy. You know, <laughs> what I'm saying, the neighborhood. So I have a, <laughs> you, you said that. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to oh, surpass shit. one day. You know. So who would be the idol for you that you're? Do you have an idol that you look to surpass or that you mentally? Compete against? Great question. Oh, man. Speech God. Currency. Currency, man. Currency, okay. Thank you. Currency. Who's like hella slept on. Hella slept on, ridiculously, most hella consistent. Hella slept on, but it's like he's not concerned because he's already got it figured out. Mm-hmm. You know, like niggas got strains of weed. Niggas got clothing lines. Niggas got snack lines. Mm-hmm. Niggas got motherfucking um, the car shit. The, he, low, yeah. like the the car club and the fucking car shop. He created a lifestyle with Jet Life. Nigga, yeah, he really like that's when that currency re sparked my uh like re refueled my flame, like as far as like rap goes. Like uh, um for a long time everybody I was listening to, all my favorite rappers were dead. Like mm. I'm like I mean it's like on one end, it's like, it can't really be that big of a deal, but on the other end, it's like, it's like probably not the best, mm-hmm. you know? Like, you gotta, you, you wanna stay current nowadays. Like, that's where a lot of the rappers fall off, is like, they're not able to, to make that transition into staying themselves, but still being relevant, mm-hmm. like, nowadays. E-40? Yeah. That part. E-40, Snoop Dogg, we just Sugar talking about Sugar Free. Sugar Free. He's around. <laughs> he's still popping. All right, all right. He's uh, sugar. I would free, take myself out of this. Sugar, okay. sugar free is climbing back up. He's sugar free. Resurrection was a dope album. He needs. Yeah, uh, you know, you've been saying that. I like what sugar you Sugar free needs his motherfucking flowers. Thank for you. Sure. Yeah. Sugar free. P town God. Sugar free. Come, come on now. Come on, come on the show. Come on the show. If free, not bro. the cadence, come at least the, show, the whole man. pimp life Dude. lifestyle. Come on now. If you go back to um. What is oh shit? Oh, I suck. Snoop Dogg, <laughs> Snoop Ice, um, Dre, Dre and Snoop. One, two, three, and two to the four. Oh, uh, Nine, what do you think? Free's in it. What? He's in it. He uh, he was in the pee on him de- uh documentary. He was the one in the background. Oh shit! The w- when they oh no 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 not not um nothing but G thing. Let me ride. When okay. they was at the whole picnic scene. Yeah yeah yeah. Yo, he was like, in that scene. The rumor was that that kid, the kid that was dancing by the low rider, that was Lil Bow Wow. That's the rumor. I don't Damn. know if that's true. Like, I haven't researched it that deep. But. Well, that would make sense because, like, a year after, Bow Wow was on the skit on um, on Snoop Dogg's album. Mm-hmm. When uh, he was like, oh, how did it go? Like, he asked one kid, he's like, what do you want to be? And he was like, a doctor. He asked another kid, what do you want to be? Motherfucking That's Funkadelic. Shout out George Clinton. That's a Funkadelic sample. Like, actually, most of the chronic was... Well, yeah. Let's tell... Well, speak on it. We'll put it this way. Look, 
Originally, yeah, they were going to go with samples. There are a lot of samples in there, but what Dre is known for is for sampling shit, but then bringing in live musicians to replay it. So it's like it's a it's basically like a, a recreation. It's a recreation, so in that in that sense it's a I look at it as like a tax break. Like you you don't have to you're not paying for full usage. Like like when you use a sample, you have to pay usage. You know, you're using someone else's intellectual property mm-hmm. to make something else. So you got to give them a cut. Like when you um when you go in and you have when you, you like sample something but have have it replayed uh, by live instrumentalists, it's not the same type of usage. So <clears throat> less is due to the owner of the master. Mm. The less I'm going to be a that's, billionaire. That's, right? that's a loophole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, back to currency. Like that's the, the first pilot talk. Mm-hmm. Ski beats like that. I have the original. Like if you was fucking with the, you remember like the whole, you know, like Nah Right and fucking Two Doughboys and like the whole like uh, hip hop blog scene. Mm-hmm. Wiz had his shit, the TGOD Jets blog. Mm-hmm. And like if you w- if you were like someone who followed that shit, mm-hmm. they did a release where they just released for free because you know you can't claim profit without getting sued. They basically like Pilot Talk essentially was all samples, and they couldn't they couldn't get all the samples cleared. So it was Dame Dash's idea, or probably Dame Dash and fucking Ski Beats together. It was their idea to just bring in live musicians and pull a Dr. Dre. And that's how, like, Pilot Talk is such a dope, like, the whole series, the trilogy, Pilot Talk mm-hmm. is ridiculous. But, like, the basis, like, the foundation was built on with Pilot Talk 1 was all built off of, yeah, just sampling shit, but then bringing in musicians to um, to replay things to basically cut costs. You know, it's like it's less of a, it's less taken from the budget, the production budget. I like you know? that. It's a, it's a smart move, too. It's like, and it's not like you're stealing. You know, these people still get their due. They still get their recognition. But it's like you're having a musician play it instead of just ripping it right off the record. And this is what I say. Go, Go back, back. Rewind. <laughs> That's and catch that gem there right there. That was catch my, re- that. That was my rewind gym. sound. That was whack. <laughs> 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 that shit was terrible. <laughs> ah! Blockbuster would be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a block to bust. <laughs> oh, pun intended. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> fucking love you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yo, fun fact. One of the last black blockbusters is in... Not black blockbusters. One of the last blockbusters is in Alaska. Wow. I think it's closed down. That makes already. sense because it should be too cold to like... Go out there in red box and be out there the next day oh, and drop shit off. Like, like, really try really, <laughs> like give me four this, or five days. Keep this motherfucker. Like, you pay three hundred dollars for I Am Legend. Like, fuck. God, damn. Oh, my dad's mad at me. my dad was mad at me when I was a young for so many games I kept. And oh shit! shit. Yeah. I still have a copy of uh, it's, just, it's fucking vintage now. I guess I have a copy of Hitman Two for PlayStation Two. Wow. From Blockbuster, and I had to write on it in permanent marker, do not return. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like my pops wouldn't be like good Samaritan trying to take this shit back. I'm like, nah. Like, you know what? That those fees, bro. Uh, I was like, yo, my stepsister, she started, she started her own Blockbuster account, and then uh, families went there several ways. My 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 dad got divorced again, and. Um, my stepmom and stepsisters went one way, and we stayed in California. So it was like I just got left with this game. I'm not gonna turn it in. Nah. Yeah, yeah, right. That was the only game I had for PlayStation Two at the time. So I kept that motherfucker. And I still have. And you probably really good at Hitman Two too. What's <laughs> <laughs> up, <Some> blockbuster? <laughs> <laughs> I can play the role now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got all the disguises. Uh. Well, let's get into that third game. That third and final game. Which is called School Up. Okay. Where we ask three questions related to the hip hop culture. And if you get all three right, you will be our valedictorian. Yeah. And we don't have one this year yet. Well, okay. technically. We do. We have, I'm sorry, I can't discount. We do. Technically, we have Donald, but I did fuck up. <laughs> Donald Glover? Yeah, no. you know, we had him, nigga. We got him in the stash. No. <laughs> Hard act. Tough act to follow. <laughs> Donald Guy, shout him out. Uh, yeah, what up, Donald Guy? Great guy, man. Yeah, Great his, guy. 
But <laughs> that ain't about that. Let's do it. Oh, What's up? so Jim, question number one: Mac Miller's track "Diablo" from his Faces album sampled which jazz artist? Was it A. Miles Davis and Craig Gillespie? Ah, I fucked that up. <laughs> B. John Coltrane and Duke Ellington. C. Robert Glasper Trio or D. Horace Silver Quartet. It was a Robert Glasper Trio. Mm, set up the confidence. See that the chest is out too. Shit. Is that That's your final, final answer? answer? Final. All right. We're going to have to school them. Ah, uh, Horace Silver. Exactly. John Ooh, Coltrane damn, and Duke Ellington. Ooh. They sampled a sentimental mood off oh, the oh, joint. Get the album. fuck out of here. R.I.P. Mac though. R.I.P. <laughs> Mac for real. And musically, wasn't appreciated while he was here. I don't feel mm, it because. Not. Uh, that kid was a genius. And we produced shit, everything he did too. Yeah, Larry Fisher, and man. played the instrument. Ah ah ah. Ooh. All right. Question number two. Being so relevant in the culture as well as Run DMC made him famous. Shell Toe Adidas first dropped what year? Was it B nineteen seventy five? I mean A nineteen seventy five. <laughs> B nineteen ninety one. C nineteen eighty three. Or D nineteen sixty nine. Hey. <laughs> Coming down to your final ah, answer. I would say 83. Is, Is that, that your final answer? answer? Yes. We're, We're going to have to. Damn, school. son. 75. 75. It was actually D, 1969. What? And they were originally. Did you even give me a D? I did. did. Whoa, pause. Yeah, pause. <laughs> <laughs> Set myself up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually made in 1969 as a new series to the pro model show, Basketball Shoe. Mm. So apparently I'm terrible at hip-hop. <laughs> uh, please buy my music. <laughs> <laughs> so I can smoke more Dutches and read more books. <laughs> Back All right. Man. <laughs> Final question. Final question. Let's get get on the board, man. Scoreboards out there. Get, get on, on the board. board yeah. First hip hop group to appear in a cartoon animation was it A. Run DMC, B. MC Hammer, C. Kid and Play, or D. N.W.A. MC Hammer. Is, Is that, that your final, final answer? answer? Final answer. We're, We're going gonna have to have to school it. It was Run DMC. No, it was actually C. Kid and Play. They had a short-lived television series on ABC. Kid and Play was before MC Hammer. Yes, before the cartoon, uh, before MC MC Hammer's cartoon show. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would never guess that. Yo, June, there's this uh, there's this thing. Google called Google. <laughs> uh, I joking. shot myself in the foot. It hurts. <laughs> Just fucking with you. No, but June, super thank you for playing. School them. Brought to you by Cuzzle Clothing. I got school. You don't got your. We got your. Fuck. Everybody's got your back like Cuzzo. Hey, what up, Cuzzo? Something like that. Shit. Sap. Don't nobody got you. <laughs> Don't so nobody got your back like Kazo. <laughs> there we go. No, see, he knows. Yeah. Ain't nobody got no, your back like Kazo. I didn't know like any Cuzzo. of those fucking Actually, questions. Actually, yeah. <laughs> nobody got your back like Kazo. Family first. Family first. Family first. Oh, 2020. We construction right now. Just wait till the end of the year. It's going to be Ooh. saucy. Oh, yeah. All this shit? New. Yes. Yes. Shabwang. I, <laughs> I got a question for both of y'all. Okay. All right. Before, you know, we get into the freestyle segment and all mm-hmm. that. You know, you know about the IE, uh, pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, and you've been in the IE, been doing music for a while in the IE. Yeah. I had this debate with a coworker, not necessarily a debate, I was just listening to what he was saying, because he's in the music. And he you know, kind of paid attention to the IE scene. And he was saying that, um, and we had this talks about, like, uh, uh, artists coming from the IE, the support that they're trying, you know, I guess I'm trying to say, do you believe that there's a lack of support for artists in the IE from people who live in the IE because the IE is full of maybe like older families and a lot of illegal people and people who don't fuck with next uh, with a uh, hip hop music. Mm-hmm. Or why why or in your opinion why do you think 
the IE doesn't necessarily um, get behind an artist or two and really push them to the forefront. You gotta go to LA. You know, that's what people yeah. say. You gotta go to LA or you gotta go somewhere else to really get that shine and get that support. And I believe we support each other as definitely. artists. In the community, but, definitely. But yeah, but getting just average Joe Smokes <laughs> to yeah, to yeah. to support you. Why do you think that is? That's a good ass question, huh? Um I think it could kinda have to deal with the fact like how we talked about earlier, like if we backtrack to me talking about um, niggas wanting to be like from Anchorage mm -hmm. like, I think it might be like more of a thing like kind of along those lines to where um, I, I know like we all know hella people that rep the IE hard but like yeah. I feel like everybody doesn't rep the IE hard like they're like people just say oh I live in SoCal or I live in LA yeah. <laughs> from LA yeah. they live out here mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so I think that might have to do with it somewhat um the other thing, I guess, would just be, like, just the the fact that we don't really... There's not too many cats popping from out here, like, on the like the mainstream level. Like, uh, what's, like, the biggest person to come out of the IE is probably, like, like relevant, like, current. Mm -hmm. Like, we would say, like, Hit Boy from mm -hmm. Fontana. Travis mm -hmm. Barker. Travis, yeah, yeah. with, like, relevant. Mm -hmm. Travis Barker, he'd been thugging for, like, 20 years. Yeah. 30 years, yeah. actually. Yeah. But... Yeah, like like I feel like Hit Boy is like probably like the newest thing to come out of the IE, I and you know, we ain't never heard this nigga. I I haven't heard this nigga say anything about the IE. I know like his last, second to last project before the uh, the half a mil shit with Dom was a, uh, he had the Tony Fontana project, and I feel like that's the first time like if you outside of the scene, I I feel like. That's the first time niggas realize, like, oh, this nigga's from Fontana. Mm -hmm. Like, even, like, it's the same shit with Mad Lib. Like, um, I, I, I lived in Ventura and I lived in Oxnard. Mad Lib is from Oxnard. I know people who don't even call him Mad Lib. They call him Otis because mm -hmm. he's OJ. He, Otis, he's Otis Jackson Jr. Um, his pops owned a record store in, in Oxnard. But it's like, anytime you read an article about Mad Lib, it'll say, LA based producer mm -hmm. you know it's like it's like so I feel like it's a lot of misconception based on like media like not knowing like people outside of California not really knowing like how this shit breaks down yeah you know yeah that that has something to do with it what I mentioned before is like like people not really being down to rep the IE I think that might have something to do with it like um I guess those are yeah, those probably be the two main factors that that in my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like because I mean there's hella dope artists out here and it's Facts. like you know it's it's not like we have a lack of talent. That's definitely not the not the issue. Mm -hmm. I think it's just lack of support. <coughs> yeah. But the reason why, like, I feel like there's a lot of reasons mm -hmm. than more than just one. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Like, and I feel like another thing is like. Uh, it's kind of clicky. The IE is kind of clicky. It's like, you know, I mean, it's you see... It's gravitating into that. Yeah, you it, see, it like, the, the, mm. there, there's, like, a lot of overlap, but at the same time, there's not enough. Like, I feel like if people stuck together, if people stuck up for each other, like, as being from the IE, as much as, you know, we'll stick up from an art for an artist that's not even from the IE... Like if we had that, like I, I don't even think it would be like an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, people would know, like people would know about mm -hmm. this area. You mm -hmm. know, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't even be a question. Mm -hmm. That's the flagship of Alt Black, my G, mm -hmm. mm. of trying to, you know. For me, like being in this scene, like actually getting to watch it, I I personally know. Oh man, so many dope motherfuckers here. Hella, there's so many dope motherfuckers, and then like. I don't feel like. Shout out to L.A. L.A.'s cool. Yeah, L.A.'s shout, cool. Big shout out to L.A. But I don't feel like uh, they pay, they not pay respect, but they don't show enough love to, like we the cousins, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah. we literally First over cousin. a hill. First cousin, mm -hmm. like yeah. you know, and and when I was seeing, kind of seeing that and seeing how how choosy L.A. is about who they want to promote and stuff, that's that's what makes all black is because I want that spotlight mm -hmm. on all y'all. Y'all know, you know? Yeah. I'm a comedian, my G. Like, I'm really not getting nothing 
I, I, like, I don't, I don't want to say like I'm not getting nothing from this. I am because like I get to shout out the homies, but like I really do do this for for you, for I for Johnny it. Bars. For, I appreciate it. You know, homegirl Moni, homegirl Moni, Noah James, Noah yeah, James, yeah, everybody. Yeah. It's like because, a, it's an eclectic mix, but everybody got talent. Mm-hmm. It's, there's one thing that people don't have. Yeah, you know, it, I mean, the one thing. That's not a problem is the lack of talent. There's so much talent. And creativity. Creativity, yeah. And like, there's so many different sounds and vibes. It's just, it's oh, crazy, yeah. I feel like, there, yeah, it might even be, like, some fucking, some behind-the-scenes shit to where, I don't know, like, somebody from the IE pissed somebody high up off, <laughs> and they just don't want to see the fucking area shine. Like, who knows? It, it, you know? I don't know. I don't want to say it feels like that, but it, it seemed like, People started crafting tears. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know because I've been around for a minute. There was no tears. Mm-hmm. We were just all fucking with each other, and mm-hmm. that's the that's 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 the part I'm birthed from, and and I love. But like like you said, it's starting to get clicky, it's starting to get tears. Yeah. But with this show, like I said, it's the flagship. It's like man, fuck all that. Like it's the pie, baby. Like yeah. we got it. Not only show L A, but just show the world. Mm-hmm. Like there's more to California than L A and the Bay. How are you gonna skip everything in between? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, seven, me, that's seven hours of like you missing some great ass yeah. artists. I know that story because like coming up in Central California, like grow, like um, when I moved from Alaska and was living in a five five nine, like all my homies from Porterville and shit, all my homies from Tulare County. See, like them niggas feel hella overlooked. Like, Come through. Know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pull, Pull up. up. Pull up. Pull up. Shout out those towns again. Porterville, Tulare County, the whole county, the whole TC, Fresno, uh, Visalia, even Bakersfield. Y'all welcome to pull up. Thanks. Pull up. <laughs> All Black Podcast at Gmail. Drop your shit. Drop I it. will check it out. Five five nine. What up? Yeah, <laughs> people don't believe it, but it's either me or PJ. We listen to almost everything, <laughs> everything. in this fucking area. <laughs> and if you send it to us, we will go over it with a fine tooth comb. We will. Yes. But invest in your craft. You heard that, man. If you do shoot it, shoot it through. If you do it, I got a launch pad for you. Bingo. <laughs> platform. And then, and then, you know, you do what you do. But uh, as far as, I don't think, like, outsiders, it's because I think it's we're so close to LA mm-hmm. that for the people that are here, mm-hmm. they're just always going to look at you as a hometown person mm-hmm. instead of looking at you as a professional mm-hmm. because they were like, Oh, why should I go to this? It's it's it's, it's kind of weird, but it's like, why should I go to this show that's two exits away when I could just go to L.A. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's what's fucking a little bit fucking up the IE because people will always compare us to mm-hmm. s- superstar level, what, whatever L.A. is, because most not the shit on Compton or whatever, but most of the talent in L.A. ain't from L.A. Mm-hmm. Just all right, can can we tell the truth? A hundred percent. Dig a little deeper in all really, those guys' bios, and, it's and like, really, all those people <laughs> in the city are just picking apart from what people are bringing to them, and then creating on top of that. Mm-hmm. I'm not dissing LA, love LA, Most but I just LA. want to like let's mm-hmm. be for real. Mm-hmm. And what I think is magical about the IE is no one's bringing a shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no one's bringing us something like from Chicago or some. I mean, you did bring us something from Alaska, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm just, but for for the most part, no one's bringing us something where we could pull from. It's right. literally we have to create it within ourselves and then put it out. Mm-hmm. And but I feel like that magical thing that all these artists are doing are just being blanketed over by the fact that mm-hmm. you could hop on a ten and go to L. A. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah, niggas like get lumped in out here. We kind of just get lumped in yeah. with the whole L. A. scene. And when you put it, it's like. You know, all these different areas are ponds, you know, you know, like the IE is its own pond and you can be mm-hmm. the biggest fish in the IE pond. But once the, like the media and outsiders, they lump you in with that L.A. pond, it's like you're not the biggest fish because the, the fish in L.A. are a lot bigger, mm-hmm. you know. Apparently, and, I mean, you know, supposedly, supposedly. Uh, allegedly, uh, yeah, <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I just feel like people just need to support more. It's just like uh, supporting a small business, like you know, Facts. going to the going to the the local liquor store instead of going to Walmart for a mm-hmm. change. Like, mm-hmm. like that's basically what the IE needs. It's like y'all niggas don't have to drive all the way to the Novo in downtown LA to get a good quality show. These niggas doing practices. shows right here in this backyard. These niggas <laughs> doing shows at the Dope Spot. These niggas doing shows at bigger venues, the Glass House, the mm-hmm. Fox, right yeah. here in Pomona, right here in the IE. You can go to fucking. Fox Theater, Riverside. Riverside's IE, ain't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's just like, yeah, there's many, 
hella like multiple outlets to go through. It's just like I feel like the people need to wake up and mm-hmm. like uh, support, like give back to their community. I don't, I don't think people look as like giving back to their community. They don't look at shit like that as giving back. Like when you tell somebody to give back to their community, they feel like. You gotta go out and like pass out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to homeless people. <laughs> no, yeah. nah, you know, like you yeah. could literally like go like everybody nowadays. Everybody knows somebody that raps or performs or does something musical. Mm-hmm. Go support that person one time, and like you know, spend that ten at the guarantee, door. Guarantee, guarantee you'll feel like you did something for your community, even if more so like than it doesn't show on paper. Yeah, you know? mm. and honestly, I don't understand why. What, what's so bad about paying ten out of door here? Compared to paying fifty dollars yeah. at the door to wait three well, hours was, in line, I was thinking, I was thinking <laughs> like because the IE Pomona, IE and Pomona, the pie, the pie is mm-hmm. is um so close to LA. I think that um on the reverse side of like, I think people looking is like if you're perform like if you're if you're not good enough or or prestigious enough to perform in LA, why would I go to see you in? Hey, but the thing that they don't know is most of the niggas that's performing in L.A. Yeah. paid to play. Oh, oh, that's oh, a whole nother oh, can of worms. Oh, you want to talk about it? You want to talk about it, baby? I love this subject. I love this subject. This mic is on fire. Oh, oh, that guy you saw at the comedy store was he really at the comedy store? No, or did he, he had to bring ten people uh, and pay. He bought five people and paid two hundred and fifty for the tickets he didn't sell. Oh, bazing! Oh. And does he make any money off those two item purchases? Not a dime. Whoa. Oh. oh my God! Imagine that as a wow. business structure. How long would that last? Who oh. would support that? Oh no! Oh no! You guys have been burned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, that's real no, true. no. So, all right. Uh, fair to say you're against pay to play. I'm totally against pay to play. Thank wow. you. All right. What's your biggest? Uh, what what would you what would you make your biggest uh, mark against pay to play? Why would you be against pay to play? Um, I would be against pay to play because most beginning artists don't have like the resources to um to either you know have that money just to just come out of pocket with this money or to sell these fifty tickets or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, like because if you don't sell all fifty, you're gonna have to come out of pocket. Mm-hmm. And I feel like most beginning artists, like they don't have, they just don't have that that those type of resources. And I feel like it's just, I don't know, it's like, it's weird because there was a time when you know the whole like, oh yeah, it's the the ex- you're getting you're getting the exposure, you're getting the opportunity to open for this more well known person. There was a time when that was a, like actually a thing, mm-hmm. but I feel like that time has came and went. Oh, uh, like, that was only between two thousand three to two thousand six. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that time came and went. I've been around for a while, man. Yeah, <laughs> that time came and went. So it's like, and I feel like niggas figured that shit out, and now it's just like a way to like cut tour costs. Like we fucking throw a hundred tickets to four random niggas, and if they don't sell them, they pay us. If they do sell them, we we got a full house. So either way, they yeah. Win. Either way, they're taking care of the venue. They win. Yeah, like, it's <laughs> like yeah, like people. It's basically every way nowadays the way to pay to play is set up. It's like the the artist never wins ever. It's not for you. It's not set up for you to win. It's mm-hmm. not. It's for the venue. It's to cover. cover and this the, janky ass promoter. You know the janky ass promoter cover like rider fees for the the star the main the headliner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know like shit like that. Like, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, there was a time where I feel like pay-to-play could have been beneficial, but I feel like, Very like brief. Said, it it's gone, you know? Like, yeah, definitely. That's about like, as long as Vine. Yeah. Hey, exa- <laughs> Six seconds. It's like, ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> Yo, ain't nothing wrong with performing for free, but when, you perf- when you're paying to perform, it's, it's, uh, it's different. It's not an investment. It's, it's not. It's really not. It's, it's, like, it's like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, it's like you're digging yourself in the hole because that fucking say you don't sell half of the tickets. That two hundred and fifty dollars that you got to come up with could have been put towards like a, a tour, photo shoot, a tour, a fucking video shoot, a goddamn rent, rent. You know, it's like, <laughs> like studio time, fucking merch, yes. the shit that you can actually like monetize off of. You know, you say you only got ten T-shirts, you bought them all for ten dollars each. 
you sell them for twenty, like you doubled your money. You doubled your money. That's a flip, and it's legal, you know. And like it's free advertisement because now, you know, hopefully if somebody buys your shirt, they're gonna wear it. Mm-hmm. And now you got somebody asking like, "Yo, that's a dope shirt. Who the who's Tony Asar? Like, you know what I'm hmm. saying? And then they fucking do the they do the homework, smoke a Dutch read a book. Or Google some shit, mm. and you know that's, that's pun intended. That's it, pun intended. Sap, sap. <laughs> I just, I just, I just want to piggyback off that because this is my personal feelings against pay to play because I've seen it in both music and comedy. Yeah, you seen both. I've seen both yeah. sides, and and yeah, no one. There's no way an artist is ever going to win, be a comedian or musician, doing pay to play. Mm-hmm. And me personally, now I understand. There's producers out here in the community, both L.A. or the whole pie, mm-hmm. that are actually going down. They're taking losses, financial losses, to to build up shows and, you know, create a, a genuine crowd. Mm-hmm. I respect that. I would pay $10 at the door for that. Mm-hmm. I would buy drinks at the door for that producer because I respect what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I respect their time, and I respect the fact that they love the craft so much mm-hmm. they're willing to take this x amount of loss mm-hmm. all right mm-hmm. now with pay to play that really is a bunch of bottom feeding motherfuckers <laughs> that don't give a shit about the arts huh. that don't give a shit about music yeah. they don't they don't care the quality mm-hmm. doesn't matter they, like, it don't as long as you got your 500 dollars you can perform you got yeah 15 minutes and yeah exactly the quality don't matter i have been to these shows both comedy and music wise and Musically, musically, my homies were dope, but were they on a dope ass lineup? No. Why? Because these motherfuckers who probably just recorded this song three weeks ago just happened to have two hundred fifty dollars and was like, "I'll pay." And brought their girlfriend. Yeah, and that's not playing f- in the background. And they, <laughs> and they rapping over, barely rapping over, it. over <laughs> un- unmixed. Un- unmixed recordings yeah. and I take that and as direct offense. support. That's direct support. Yeah, <laughs> and that's offensive because like. People like you, people people like Zenso, mm-hmm. people like no like niggas I know that are practicing. Mm-hmm. Niggas I know that that there is no plan B. Mm-hmm. This is their plan that you gonna put them on the same stage as a motherfucker who just got money, who don't practice, who's not prepared, who don't know the words to the old shit. Right. Name is Lil Boomerang. Right, Lil right. Boomerang, because right. I come back around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, you gotta come back because I love you. But <laughs> no, no, but you know that's 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 essentially my outrage with paid to play. You just bottom feeding. Yes. And real communities can benefit and build off of what you're trying to do, but because you're afraid to sacrifice and. Why is it the artist's job to bring people to your motherfucking venue? True that. Wait, I'm going to say that to the camera. Why <laughs> is it the artist's job to bring people to your motherfucking venue? My nigga, you reached out to me, told me I have X amount of minutes, but I had to bring X amount of people. If I do that, why? How, how come I'm not getting 20%? Because huh. if them people stay, like what? You gonna pay and you're going to make extra out? hourly? Yeah, <laughs> you're going to give me a bigger set? Like. Drinks be like ten to seventeen dollars a piece, yeah, and I got my people to stay an extra hour and a half. You know they bought at least two more drinks. That's thirty four dollars. Should I at least get twenty of that? Piece mm-hmm. of I that mean, door. Uh, you know what I'm saying? A piece of that bar. I'm just saying. Sorry, I, I like went that. on a tangent because I'm lit and I hate pay to play. <laughs> Yo, no, that was a. I, a, I wouldn't call it a tangent because it was well needed. It was well, <laughs> well needed. <laughs> Well, well, well articulated. Yeah, mm-hmm. very well articulated. My yeah. outrage is with Twitter. Why did it say speech guy just tweeted? You've been right here. <laughs> Come on, Twitter. The service. How, how did I tweet? <laughs> the service. So I see this nigga talking all the time. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the like assistant in the back. Tweet for me real quick. This nigga talking. He's about to go on a tangent right now. This nigga telling you on a tangent. All got me tweeting for right now. Ain't this shit. I'm just trying to get this intern shit. <laughs> hey, yo. Oh, shit. You I see, gotta take a piss. You see that? This is, yeah. That's like almost gotta take a piss. But maybe you have some cake in your ass for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> you trying to like get it out. Oh, can I do it to him? Do it to him, man. <laughs> this is the part where we do this. Fuse dance. Subscribe to All Black because my revenge on my high school bullies really depends on it. Subscribe to All Black because I want to finally be able to afford two-ply toilet paper. I'm tired of shaking people with these shitty hands. 
Subscribe to All Black because if you don't, you're a Trump supporter. Subscribe to All Black because I want to take this podcast to the next level and be able to like sacrifice somebody in Hollywood. Like I want to get that big. Subscribe to All Black because I have a point to prove with a teacher who said I wouldn't amount to nothing. If you're out there right now, I'm fucking coming for you. Subscribe to All Black because I'm tired of feeling bad about early onsets of dad bods. Like, I'm sexy, right?